Welcome back to Lifestyle Today, where life in style is lifestyle. I'm Deborah Edwards, and today we talk to Jamaican UK based top boy actor Michael Ward. Get into the arts and dance with NDTC and check out Sumfest Artisan Village with senior reporter Janet Silvera. <music> Boy actor and BAFTA 2020 rising star Michael Ward is in Jamaica. So we caught up with the Scorpio for his homecoming and I got to brush up on my English accent. We're here with Michael Ward, actor of Top Boy, yes. and you were also born in Jamaica. This is your first time back to the country in 20 years. Welcome home. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. So you've been away for 20 years. What is it like being back? Um, it's a broad question, but I feel like, you know, it's been, I've enjoyed my experience so far. There's still so much to um, do and also, you know, enjoy. But so far, like, you know, just coming back, getting to see family that I haven't seen in a very long time. Um, being able to go see my dad's grave, which I wanted to do for a long time, was very, very special. You know, we even had a party in the lane in Spanish town as well, that for me was, you know, great to see all the people come out um, and kind of just see where, you know, I came from. Um, so yeah, no, it's been a great, great experience and I'm just glad I was able to do it, you know, um, especially at this time of my career where, you know, um, I've got a lot going on. Um, so yeah, no, it's been, it's been great. And just being able to just see the people, you know, like, and just see the culture, you know, like, up close and personal. You know, I've always had a kind of idea of what it would be like, but no expectation, just kind of, you know, always wanted to see what it was like in person. So now I've got that experience. It just, you know, I'm just happy, man. I feel blessed to be around my people. Have people been recognizing you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah? They're yeah. calling you Jamie. <laughs> yeah. They could either call me here, they either call me Jamie or Top Boy, <laughs> literally. How does that feel? To be back home and your own Jamaicans recognizing yeah, I you. I think that's what's special, you know. Like obviously we get love um, across the world. I've, I, I've I've traveled to a lot of places, you know, and obviously Top Boy being on Netflix is, um, you know, the story resonates globally. But to come back to Jamaica and receive that love here from your people, you know, because you just never know how people are going to react to you. Um, for me, that's it's such a special feeling. You know what I'm saying? So, to my understanding, you are into manifestation and visualization yeah. to the point where you manifested your role on Top Boy, pretty much, <laughs> and even DM'd Ashley. Yeah. Yeah. How do you go about manifesting the things that you want? Um, for me, it's like even when I'd done all of that, I was so young, I didn't know what um, manifestation and all of that stuff was. It's not like now, you know, where those things are kind of, you know, said to you a lot more and whatnot. But back then I was just so, um, I just didn't really care to do stuff, you know what I mean? If I felt like it can enhance my chance of getting an opportunity, I'll do it, you know what I'm saying? So it was just like, if I, if I message Ashley, if he doesn't see it, mm -hmm. then, you know, it'll be the same as if I never messaged him. But if he does see it, then that's an opportunity that could potentially come. So that was kind of my thought process behind, behind it then. I never really thought, you know, I'd ever be in Top Boy because back then as well, you know, the show had come off right. um, our screens and stuff like that. So, you know, it was more just seeing myself on, like, seeing myself through someone on, on screen that I, I really appre appreciated about the show and I've always wanted to be involved in something like that. And, you know, I used to love watching it when I was younger as well. Mm -hmm. So I guess all of that, um, you know, plays into it. But like in terms of manifestation now, yeah, because I know how powerful those moments were, it is about just bringing positive energy and positive vibes to everything that I do, you know what I mean? And just always wanting the best for myself, my family and my friends. So, you know, if you want the best and you're manifesting that all the time, then you're only going to, you know, receive the best, hopefully. So. Speaking about positive vibes, I remember watching your speech from the BAFTA Rising Star Award yeah. in 2020. Yes. You almost brought me to tears, especially <laughs> when they panned on your mom. Yeah. What your, was going through your mind at that time? Honestly, I don't remember. It was that, that whole section of the day was kind of a blur, but at the same time, very, um, I was very present, if that makes sense. I remember a lot of the moments, but at the same time, I don't remember a lot of how I felt. I just remember just wanting the night to kind of 
the ceremony to kind of be over, to, mm -hmm. to also find out if I'd won or not, but just to kind of just enjoy the day. Because, you know, that kind of section, you know, especially when you want to win, you know, not just for you, but for the people, you know what I'm trying to say. You know, and I know I had a lot of support because it was the only award that was voted for by the public. Um, you know, you just hope that it, our support is more than everyone else's mm -hmm. support. So it's kind of just waiting for that to get beat out of the way and then kind of just enjoying. But for me, it was more just focusing on when I found out I won, not falling over and <laughs> making sure that I was able to say the words that I needed to say and, you know, just set, spread positivity, yeah. Yeah. So, turns out, you're a Scorpio. Yeah. You're born on November the 18th, yeah. which is my birthday yeah. also. That's crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. That is totally crazy, but a good thing at the same time. Yeah. It's pretty cool. However, Scorpios, we tend to get a bad rap. Yeah. Are you I don't toxic? Know why. I'm not toxic. I don't think I am. Either. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing. We're never gonna admit that. Oh. <laughs> but I think. I think. I'd think. I'd actually admit if I was. Maybe I'm a little bit, but I don't know. Right. Depends on what toxic is for you. You know. What I mean? is toxic for you? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Inquiring minds want to know: Do you have a girlfriend, sir? Nope. You're focused just on your work. Yeah, just work and. You know, just enjoying myself, man. I don't really want to be, not that it's a distraction, but I just want to stay focused on this, that like work, family, and enjoyment. Favorite Jamaican food? Since I've been here? Yeah. Well, or just, or, in general? I'd probably have to say Oxtel. I love Oxtel. Can you cook? Um, not well, no. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do a quick flash round. Mm -hmm. Your mom, what comes to your mind? Um, strength. Strength, okay. Yeah. Kevin Hart. Inspirational. Jamaica. Love. Okay. Beauty. Film. Uh -huh. <laughs> I just caught that film and yeah. it was really good. That was a good job in there. So yeah. what is next for you, Michael Ward? Um, kind of just, you know, I just want to keep telling stories um, in the way that I tell stories, which mm -hmm. is through film and TV. Um, you know, I've got a couple films coming up. Um, not this year, one of them's coming out this year and one of them hopefully early next year. Um, so yeah, man, just keep working with great directors, great filmmakers, um, great actors, um, you know, great writers. People that just want to tell stories that I'm interested in, as well as, um, you know, what people would want to be interested in, you know what I'm saying? And kind of stuff that's, that I can relate to as well. Um, I want to be, that's what I kind of want to do. Um, I want a lot of the stuff that I do to be grounded in authenticity, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, that's, that's kind of where I'm, like, my head is at, just focusing on telling more and more stories. Okay. For those in the diaspora, mm -hmm. right, what's it like being a Jamaican away from home? Because you're still repping. Yeah, for sure. And that's undeniable, you know. We want to keep doing that, keep, you know, making people aware of our culture because it's such a huge part of our lives. Even if you're over there, you know, we still listen to Jamaican music, we still eat Jamaican food. Like my auntie and uncle um, have a restaurant, you know, a Jamaican restaurant in Essex called One Love. You get what I'm trying to say? So it's like, it's just keeping the culture alive, really. But I feel like for me, what it means for me over there is just, it's just a different kind of way of living, you know, to be um, a Jamaican Brit. But at the same time, it still feels similar. So like when I've come here, I don't feel too far away from what I know because of the people over there. You know, like London's a very multicultural place. Um, so yeah, our, our culture is obviously a very big part of that. You know, mm -hmm. Jamaica has a very big influence, not just in London, but you know, like Birmingham, um, Gloucester, like yeah. all of these places, or even in Canada and stuff like that, you know, across the world, we have such a big influence. So, you know, it's, no, it's never, you don't ever feel like you're too far away from home. And I feel like that's why it's been easy for me to kind of come here and settle in so well. Okay. Last question for yeah. you. We are celebrating 60 years of yes. independence from England. What are your wishes for Jamaica? To just keep growing stronger. I mean, it's a very, that, that's, a, that's an easy question for me to ask because at the end of the day, we all want Jamaica to succeed, you know, especially if you're from here, born here, you know what I mean? I, we, I want Jamaica to be, you know, in history, one of the greatest places that's ever been established, mm -hmm. you get what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, I just want it to keep, you know, rooting this culture in authenticity across the world, you know what I'm saying? Making more and more people aware of Jamaica if they don't know. Um, also, just encouraging people, more and more people to come here, invest here, 
You know what I'm trying to say? I feel like that's um, very important. Bringing more and more stars here that, that, are, that don't really come here like that. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, this is my first time back, but I'll be back a lot more um, so I can understand the culture more here because it is very different at the same time. You know what I mean? And seeing where I can help, um, you know, bridge the gap between the Western world and us. Okay. All yes. right. Thank you so much for your Thank time. Thank you. Thank you. The National Dance Theatre Company, NDTC, is celebrating 60 years in existence. So we had a conversation with Artistic Director Marlon Sims about the company's rich history and new season. So 60 years, you guys are as old as independent Jamaica. Tell people quickly how NDTC started. Well, NDTC started as a dream in 1962 when the country gained independence from England, the idea at that time was to develop a form, a dance, a dance language that reflected the people of Jamaica. And the most important thing about forming a national company at that time was to say to the world, this is who we are. And so the founders, Eddie Thomas and Rex Nettlebrod, and 16 other dancers and technicians and a singer, Joyce Layla, they decided the National Dance Center was a way to do it. We're going to use a performing art to tell the world about us, to tell our story. And what we produce will be comparable with any other dance company or dance to the group across the world because we are a people of excellence. What can we expect from NDTC in its 60th year? In its 60th year, well, I can tell you what you expect from the NDTC season of dance, which is currently running until August 14. So we have gone back into the treasure trove of the rep pieces that we know people enjoy and love to see. We brought back instead of a drum score, which I think was done in 1971, and we have brought back Garabenta. And let me tell you something about Garabenta. Garabenta is that one traditional folk piece that you leave the theater singing and dancing. So I know our audiences have thus far enjoyed it. We have also created a new suite of songs for our singers and musicians, a tribute to Rita Mari, the legend in reggae music. And you know, it coincides with their 76th birthday this year, and it's a huge celebration regarding that. So we're so happy to be, at the same time, paying homage to her, while they are, in fact, the family and the foundation, giving her much love during her 76th year um, of being on this earth. I mean, such a, a, a creator of fantastic reggae music. The 2022 staging of Sumfest wasn't all about the music and performances. It was also an opportunity for entrepreneurs and artisans to showcase their products. Check it out with senior reporter Janet Silvera. Greetings, my name is Moon. The company is Earth and Moon, and today I am showcasing more of my visual art. I have some jewelry and hand painted clothes as well. Uh, but I'm a multidisciplinary artist, I'm a musician, also, and a writer. I see that you have an artist or two that you have featured in your work, one being Vibes Cartel, right, and the other being Coffee. Talk to us about those two pieces. Right. What's happening with Vibes here? What's happening with Coffee over there? So these are a part of two different series that I began drawing more to explore and honor people within our Jamaican culture who I believe have, have made or are continuing to make um, impacts across the culture. So this one was a part of the Women Are Magic series last year and Coffee was one of a few artists featured but I printed this one for this occasion since she performed it. Okay. Um, but definitely, I think coffee is having a big impact locally and internationally, and it's beautiful to see because we don't always respect our artists locally while while they're here. We wait until they're gone, or we wait until the moment to recognize them. So I appreciate watching coffee get her flowers while she's alive. So the name of my company is Wix by Wix? by Gray, Weeks? Weeks by Gray. as in a candle wick gray in my last name. So that coming together, telling you what we're about as well as who is the manufacturer of these products. So we sell affirmation candles, lady spray most recently, and now we have weed diffusers. And our candles, they are 100% soy wax candles, no dyes, no additives. So all in God's name, <laughs> were you able to get rum cream out of that? It's a special blend. And I wanted to capture the Jamaican essence. And most persons like rum. And honestly, it has cinnamon and the rum essence. And that's all the time we have for this episode of Lifestyle Today. 
We'd like to thank our sponsors, M Style XP, and you for joining us. We leave you with the epic tribute to producer Dave Kelly by some of the greats in dancehall. See you next time. And remember, life in style is lifestyle. Let me see how you reach your vehicle. I'll be in the back of my town, don't you find somebody? Take it to me, my honor.